good morning, everybody, all the supporters of social economy. But, uh, under today's uh, G7 virtual forum, the European Commission has been given this opportunity to present the European Social Economy Regions Initiative that is one of our key instruments uh, for interactive networking, community building and uh, I think that we all know that raising awareness about social economy, its benefits for society and, and economy as such, and community building is quite a challenge and it's very important. And we think that this, our European example could actually provide a very good inspiration and method also for a global reach out. I'm very pleased that uh, we have today with us uh, Ula Engelman, uh, Head of Social Economy Unit at DG Grove of the European Commission, who will present us in more details our SR story, how it all started, what are the, the key benefits and challenges. And then, of course, we have also our three excellent SR partners from uh, Torres Vedras municipality, from Kardica and from Mayot. I will present them in, in more details during at the beginning of their individual interventions. Uh, only very shortly on the on scenario of today's workshop, so it will take 90 minutes and uh, you will have an opportunity to ask your questions on the chat box on the right side. We will be monitoring and collecting the questions and also we will have the opportunity to ask your question directly. If you raise your hand, we will give you the floor after the individual interventions. I think that we have a very exciting session ahead of us, so I will stop here and I will give the floor directly to, to Ula Engelman. Ula, please. Thank you very much, uh, Susanna, and uh, also from my side, uh, a very warm uh, welcome to all of you. I'm now... So, um, as Susanna said, I want to give you an overview of um, how it started, but also it may be even more important how it evolved uh, the European um, social economy regions. So in uh, it's the idea are based on what we discussed and discovered uh, via our expert group, which is the Gekes group. Um, which have already done a recommendation report in 2016. We have a, a task force within the European Commission on Social Economy and also on the discussions with the European Parliament Social Economy Intergroup. It became clear that social economy needs to improve visibility, recognition and raise awareness at local and regional level. So with this uh, fact that we need to do something, we, and we felt also we need to do something pretty quickly. So it was not about waiting, uh, going, let's say, so usual, we, we have an idea, we put it uh, as a terms of reference and a contractor implements, and uh, three years later, we would maybe start the project because we felt there's a pressing need to do so. And that's why we said, let's be much different. Be, let's be inter entrepreneurial. And that's how we came about the European Social Economy Regions Initiative, which we launched in February 2018. Uh, and the aim was really to raise awareness of social economy at regional and local level and to help to build networks between the different regional and local so, uh, social economy stakeholders. As I said, we wanted to do this quickly. That means we had no financial support planned for, and uh, we needed uh, to, to go gradually about it. And that's why we just launched a simple uh, Twitter call, but also the replies were then pretty simple because uh, one pager was enough, but you needed to link between social economy stakeholders and local uh, or regional authorities. And the added value was then that we from European level were also coming to your events and adding the European dimension. And then we wanted to bring everybody together in uh, who had organized uh, this kind of event. And um, 
we were, I must also say, very positively surprised by the first feedback we got, because for us it was also a test. It could have been that nobody replies to our Twitter and email request, and uh, we were there with an idea which was nice, but nobody needed it. But no, we, we, we got quite a lot of uh, feedback and a lot of participation, and that's why we then continued with it. And here you have an overview, just a word cloud with different uh, topics which were dealt with in the different ESA meetings we had between 2018 and 2020, because we then did it for three years. So the idea was really um, in the beginning, phase one, 2018, there were the different local initiatives and everybody on their own hooked up to the local authority, So, which, which is the beginning. But then when we had already at the end of 2018, where we brought together these little dots, they started to talk to each other. So they realized they have a lot in common and they started to connect a bit with each other. This is what we call the community building. But now in phase three, because also in the meantime, we had time to ask for budget to, to foster our ideas, we could support this with more substantive partnerships. So I think we really have here a very nice way how the community building goes and the fact that today from this being a single initiative, you reached out and managed to connect with each other and uh, go in what we call the social economy missions. Just to give you a bit of statistics. So um, when we started in 2018, the first pioneers, we had uh, 32 partners. And here I also want to uh, mention, we got help from uh, REVS, which is a network uh, connecting because you cannot do these things. You, you have to, to have partners, you, you build on, what exists and uh, with them they helped us to reach out and since then they were always a privileged partner for us to, to work with and uh, they helped us to shape uh, this uh, initiative. So uh, in 2019 we had then more than 50 and in 2020 more than 80 partners but that in total we have generated more than 100 regional and local partnerships which, uh, and that's also what Susanna said, which could then be a recipe. This worked on European level and you will see our partners really come from very different areas. But I think that also, this is where innovation comes in. Because if you bring together people from very different areas, you can inspire yourself and you see it works there. And if I transform this a bit from my reality, you have, uh, it's not only social innovation, it, it can be quite, um, it can also be technical innovation. So with this, what we um, have now as, as spin-offs or also as direct follow-up, as I said, we have managed to find money to do social economy missions, which are where we really ask for partnerships under topics, but topics which the ESA community has identified. It was not up sitting somewhere in an ivory tower thinking, hmm, what could the stakeholders want? No, it was co-creation. We really asked you, the community, what do you need? Based on this, we had then a very good list of what should we tackle. And we were overwhelmed by the feedback uh, we got uh, as numbers who applied to the social economy mission that showed again, that is something the sector needs. In order to, to help you to connect even better, we have also now this social economy community collaborative website. But also um, we want uh, to, of course, give you a prominent place in what we are organizing, the European Social Economy Summit, which takes place as a hybrid meeting uh, in Mannheim in May 21. It was supposed to happen in uh, November, but also there, due to like everybody going digital, we are now having a digital road to Mannheim. But within there, the ESA community in this summit has a very strong role to play. And another very important area 
is a social economy canvas, because also there we realize working with the ESA community and, and beyond is something how can we use the business model like a canvas in order to help you to structure better and to also look at, particularly for the digital and green transition, how can you use the canvas methodologies? So I have already mentioned this social economy missions. So the rules were set at least three different, um, we call it COSME because it's our uh, cooperation program for SMEs, regions and mun municipalities um, from three different countries have to get together and then they should have an exchange of views. And uh, so we have 19 winning consortia from 27 COSME countries and we start implementation in 2020. 21. And we are very curious to see what will come out of there, looking at the results. But I think you, you see the reach out and I think it's, it's a very impressive result. Here is also an overview and a link to this collaborative uh, website, which uh, I have mentioned. This was, of course, particularly important during the COVID time, or is still very important during these COVID times, where we are more virtual than ever. So therefore, I really encourage you, it is for you, use it, but use it in a sense, be interactive. It is not only to look at, but make it your tool. It's, it, it's, it's for all of us. And I have mentioned uh, the digital road to Mannheim with the next event coming up towards the end of the month and having regular uh, meetings. Also there we have put down for you the website and the slides will be made available for you. And uh, we also, because we believe very much in the innovative power of social economy, we have what we call social economy diaries where we collect social economy stories and experiences in order to then bring together a, a kind of a, of a mapping, but stories with a purpose. Because we all know you, you can show a lot of figures, you can show a lot of, um, let's say, um, facts, but when you can tell inspiring stories, that's what convinces others and, and particularly policymakers. So uh, we want to publish then for this uh, social economy summit in Mannheim and, and you, the ESA community. This is for me a very inspiring story. So I would encourage all of you to be part of it because you have proved that, that you were, let's say, more visionary because you, you are part of this community. And uh, therefore, I think this is something which, which should be mentioned. So I, I stop here, but I'm available together with Susanna, of course, for further questions later on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ula, for your presentation. And just to complement uh, what you said, if you are interested to know more about Social Economic Canvas and Social Economic Diaries, we will be running a dedicated session next week on 29th of October during the uh, virtual Road to Mannheim October session. So you can, uh, uh, you can uh, subscribe uh, uh, via the official website of the uh, Social Economy uh, Summit in Mannheim and you can join us so that we will provide more detailed inf information and you will be also able to make this uh, Social Economy Diaries exercise online with our assistance. So I think that this is also a, an important information. And yeah, so if, if you have a, a special concrete question to ask Ula, of course you can, you can either raise your hand or you can uh, place your, your question in the chat box. I'm just trying to, to check now if there is something. But maybe I will use this opportunity, Ula, because now, of course, we will we will hear these interesting SR stories from our SR partners. But what could be also interesting for for participants of today's session to hear that what these these networkings and these let's say partnerships at the regional and local level what it brings to us, let's say 
policy makers or policy unit at DigiGrow, what is the benefit, what is the added value for us? So, so this could be something what could be interesting to see in, in more details, this, uh, I would say, internal kitchen, how, how we work with this, with this, uh, with this um, excellent unit network. Thank you. Do you want me now to, to reply to this? Yes, I would say now and then, yes, we will okay. go. Yeah, because um, I think also what I said before, um, being the policy makers, for us it is important to be connected to the ground, meaning we, we need to know what is happening because we are working on policies and uh, we need to know whether our policies reach you because there is often, unfortunately, also the, let's say we hear that that European Commission is too far from uh, from the stakeholders, and I think ESA is an example that that shows it goes also differently. We we really want to be close to you, to to the community, to know exactly, not exactly, but to know what can we do, but also to get feedback. For example, if there are policy initiatives which are not useful, we also need to know this. We, we need to know your needs. It, it's not good enough just to know we need more money. Okay, yeah, but, but how and, and, and why do you not can access the money? It's this, this kind of questions. And I think ESA is a perfect feedback tool for us because as we are in discussion, we, we, we learn so much and I must also say, uh, as we went to this meeting and engaged there, uh, it was also, let's say, boosting, morale boosting, because we, we could engage with you and, and for both sides, it was some, a very positive experience because it was about real co-creation. And, and this is modern policy making needs to be fact-based, but also needs to be based on the contact with the stakeholder and stakeholder engagement to nowadays is not only to, to launch a consultation and get some feedback, which we also need, but another element is to have the contact to the community to be anchored uh, with you, meaning a dialogue is extremely important. And uh, fostering this dialogue, getting the feedback and also the examples we will hear today, they are so inspiring for us and that helps us then to put it into our policy making, but it also helps us within the commission when we talk with our colleagues, because social economy goes across so many fields. It is not linked to one policy area. So you help us also when we talk to other colleagues with your stories, and that's why also what Susanna said with the social economy diaries, it is so important to have these stories at hand to convince others, because let's be honest, social economy, still needs a lot of attention and awareness raising and that's why ESA was, was the right step to do and I think that's why I would also be very interested to, to find ways how we can promote this ESA methodology even further, meaning for me this is something which can also, which is not only in Europe, which can also be done in, in other parts of the world and would be useful for other policy makers too and we are more than willing to share and, and work uh, further on this. Thank you. Thank you, Ula. In the meantime, I can see that we have some questions in the chat box. Laurence Quark is asking whether there will be a space during the 2021 uh, European Social Economy Summit in Mannheim to learn and uh, to network more about the ESSER initiative, including with local and regional policymakers and stakeholders. Yes, this is definitely because for us, ESA is one of the big flagships. And uh, that's why we want to have ESA very prominent in this uh, European uh, Social Economy Summit. And to be honest, it's quite easy because I'm the chair of the organization committee. And uh, so it's not a secret uh, then uh, to tell you that I think ESA should have a, a big place there because uh, it, it's a good example. And uh, as this will then also lead us to the social economy action plan of the European Commission, your experience will also directly flow into these discussions. Indeed. Thank you, Ula. Then we have some uh, requests from Hakim from Libya. 
Ula, can you please send uh, your email contact? Uh, we would like to join with a presentation uh, of social economy dialogue in Libya and the upcoming summit in Mannheim. Yeah, so I think that on, on this request, we will follow up uh, after, after this uh, session. So this is, this is very good. Modern policy making comment from Jamila. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, these are all these comments that I think that we don't need to to further clarify. Okay, so if there is uh, another question, if you would like to ask, you can you can still do it, of course, and also later on. And uh, if it is not the case for the moment, well, maybe we will move on. Thank you very much for your presentation, Ula. And uh, now we will uh, move on. We will move to virtually to Torres Vedras municipality. I would like to welcome among us uh, Anna Umbelino, councillor of the Torres Vedras municipality in Portugal and rapporteur of the working group on social economic cluster under GECA's expert group. Uh, Torres Vedras municipality is an active member of our SR community. Uh, the social economy activities of Torres Vedras are focused on social impact of regional social economy organizations, inclusive employment, entrepreneurship, social innovation, and much more. So I think that now it's time to give the floor to Anna to, to share with us the Torres Vedras municipality SR journey and story and your experiences. Anna, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. I, I would like to, to thank uh, Ula and uh, Susanna for bringing the, the voices of uh, ESER community to this, uh, to this session. As it was mentioned, I'm a counselor in, uh, in Torres Vedras and um, this municipality um, recognizes for, for a, long, a long time ago the relevance of uh, social economy among its uh, strategic agenda for territorial development. The opportunity to host an ESER event was seen as a coherent and meaningful action within the trajectory that we have been pursuing and also as a challenge, uh, a timely moment to go collectively one step forward in addressing new questions and co-constructing new solutions. The ESER program was designed in a participatory button-up fashion by collecting contributions from local social development um, council members in an attempt to respond to concrete demands and meet uh, real uh, expectations. We decided uh, to submit an uh, application to ESER because um, we recognize ourselves in its framework of principles and values. Also, as European citizens, we truly believe that we have the ethical duty to contribute to the achievement of common European objectives and for the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. Behind that, we gathered evidences of ESER's positive externalities from our partners in REVs, the European Network of Cities and Regions for the Social Economy. We actually aim to create not only a forum or a scientific event, but also a social and cultural momentum with a significant mediatic reverber reverberation that could ascribe these topics in the public space by turning them mainstream. The initiative had a celebration feature that is indisputably relevant in order to reinforce local and regional belonging, but also to bring a cosmopolitan dimension that could expand the learning opportunities and broader visions and perspectives. These are, we believe, vibrant moments that trigger creative chains and project new new uh, demanding collective horizons. 
so we thought it would be interesting to maximize the impact of Ezer by conceiving a pre-event and a parallel event that would be at some point intercepted by a shared uh, moments. The pre-event aimed to create a link between our local social economy organizations and members of WEVS network from different geographies and latitudes. Since we intentionally hosted uh, two days before the annual board meeting, the idea was so to create a roadmap with field visits to innovative projects that have been implemented in our municipality in order to enhance cross-border learning opportunities. In our local viewpoint, it represented a chance to get renewed perspectives to our projects, raise new questions and test them to open new avenues for improvements and potential partnerships that could add new layers and uh, value. We then focused on uh, uh, PSAI, an innovative territorialized ecosystem that crosses the city council, 12 districts and 13 social economy organizations, and also some uh, um, SMEs, namely local producers from different sectors. It is an alternative to mainstream uh, school food supply system, uh, purchased by multinational traditional companies that used to one, the municipality uh, public tenders, thanks to a low price uh, policy. By making a gesture of resistance, we built an alternative model. In fact, it embodies a grassroots cluster that rests on the following essential pillars. Uh, the first one is production, obviously. The second refers to the acquisition through public procurement. And in order to purchase goods and services from uh, local producers and suppliers, we design a set of specific criteria, such as the freshness of the, the products measured by the time spent in transportation in order to reach environmental goals. The preparation and deliverance of school meals is assured by um, 13 um, social economy organizations spread throughout the territory. This multi-level, multi-stakeholder network incorporates in itself an attempt to create an innovative model of food governance that generates locally anchored economic dynamics within different impacts. Here, I would like just to highlight the environmental and social ones in the creation of jobs, employing citizens from small villages, mostly rural areas that face the population and are in a vulnerable uh, condition. We have um, board members were able uh, to have a flavor of all the different phases of uh, the process by establishing a direct dialogue with the intervenience from the public and social economy fields. And the visit opened new dialogue channels, which contributed to the dissemination of this program as a whole and the public procurement mechanisms and instruments in particular. Capacity building uh, for strengthening social economy ecosystem is, as you know, a critical and endless endeavor. The municipality developed a partnership with a cooperative supported by several local social economy organizations and implemented a methodology of social impact management and assessment that comprises several different uh, steps like prototyping. A community of practice has been created by allowing social economy organizations to reflect about their practices of management and strategic development taking into account their core values and principles. Simultaneously, an important data hub is, was shared. So we thought it would be interesting to create a parallel event to Ezer uh, that could give expression to the ongoing work and once again, maximizing synergies. So we implemented the social um, uh, uh, impact forum, a space for debates and sharing of good practices, methodologies, 
and uh, assessment of social impacts. It was also a space to, vig to give public vis visibility to the work developed by the social impact community, which gathered participants from local and regional um, uh, uh, organizations. The Social Impact Forum started with a communication from Alexander Hankati about social economy canvas that was mentioned before by Hula, a sense-making framework to support social economy, which later promoted a workshop entitled Testing the Social Economy Canvas, where some social economy local entities, which integrated the, um, the social impact community, tested the proposed model and others had the possibility to participate as observers. The workshop brought together five entrepreneurs representing local social economy organizations that develop social businesses who had the opportunity to apply the Canvas model and exercise their skills. The participating organizations and those that attended benefited mutually from the shared knowledge. The cooperative, which is called For Change, and the social impact territory establish it afterwards contact with the experts and researcher Alexandru Hankati and are currently applying the, the model. 85, 83 citizens from Portugal, Spain, Italy, Belgium, and Sweden, including deputies, civil servants, entrepreneurs, academics, students, participate in the ESER event, in which important policies for the promotion of social economy were presented by the European Commission, as well as information about examples of experiences in the area developed abroad, mainly in Catalonia and in Orebro County in Sweden and also Portugal. It was an important opportunity for local stakeholders to build know-how and to become inspired by the projects presented. Between sessions and among the social program activities, which included uh, some uh, lunch, dinner and artistic performances, several organizations exchanged visions uh, opinions and directions. All those fruitful contacts encourage the establishment of partnerships. This is illustrated by our participation in the project entitled Competence Sharing in Social Responsible Procurement, which intends to organize a series of social economy missions to support the launch of an open platform of socially responsible public procurement practices in six European Union countries. This project is um, managed by the European Agency for, for Small and Medium Enterprises under the COSM program, which was already uh, alluded by, by ULA. ESER fostered the development of a more acute consciousness concerning new collective demands and challenges. One suggestion that emerged from this encounter was to gather data which could provide a snapshot of the local ecosystem of the social economy to allow comparative analysis. Taking into account the importance of data, which could enhance territorial intelligence and creativity, the municipality, in partnership with the local Social Economy Study Center, elaborated the first atlas of social economy. Uh, here we find just a, a picture of the results. Obviously, I will not point the results, just the general idea and, and the method methodology. Uh, we have results that depict our local reality, start, starting with the ecosystem composition. Uh, we follow with the most frequent type of services. And um, we find interesting trends that indicate the social economy externalities in the integration, for instance, of women and vulnerable groups in the labor markets and the sector commitment to solving the real problems of the community and the relevance of social economy for the local markets, and not only in economical terms, but also in ecological ones, taking into account the shorter procurement circuits of products and goods that represent a decrease in the carbon footprint. And finally, a broad and ambitious 
agenda pointed by the sector players that requires coordinated action and effective answers. This was actually a concrete outcome triggered by ESER and the methodology is being implemented in other municipalities in the, in the region. Finally, an emerging ecosystem is being co-constructed in a disadvantaged area of, of our city around a former abandoned slaughterhouse that, that we can see in these pictures. Civil societies, social economy organizations, and the city council have defined a master plan that uh, is broken down into several different components. This includes in terms of infrastructure, an arts and creative center, and a social um, innovation uh, incubator, whose concept and program brings together the participation of social economy organizations. The contributions we have drawn from the webinars recently promoted by ESER and the research and subsequent contacts were very uh, valuable, I must say, and the networks and transversal learning are uh, undoubtedly um, precious uh, assets. So uh, to sum up, ESER shows for us the transforming power of collaboration and co-creation, and we are committed to keep its flame alive. Thank you very much. Well, this is absolutely great. Thank you very much, Anna, for making this presentation. And I think that this is uh, absolutely model case, how to build a really a working operational ecosystem, social economy and proximity ecosystem with all the players. It's not only about networking, but really how to join different initiatives, models, how to maybe upgrade, even upgrade social economy as such. So I think that this was very interesting. I can see that Jamila would like to ask a question, Jamila. Um, yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much, uh, Anna, for your beautiful uh, presentation. Yes, let's keep the flame uh, alive. Uh, that's why we are we are all here. I had uh, two questions uh, about the Atlas of Social Economy. Was it only focused on Torres Vedras, or was it uh, like in general in Portugal? Uh, and then my second question is about the incubator because we are also having one here. Well, this is not more a question, but a comment, but I would be very interested to learn more, you know, and see how you guys have adapted because we are having the same volume of social enterprises. So it could be interesting to have a return on experience from you. Okay, um, in what concerns to the first question, the Atlas was focused only in the municipality boundaries. Nevertheless, in Portugal, we have the satellite account, which is a very important source of data that allows us to compare uh, some uh, data that is uh, focused locally with national data. So um, I think that it's very, very important for the countries to develop the social, um, the satellite accounts. In our municipality, this atlas has several indicators and our aim is obviously to um, monitor the evolution of these indicators throughout time. Um, otherwise, we are not able to see the effects of our public policies. So for us, this is a very important source of data. In what concerns to the incubator, we are now uh, doing an application to a national program that will allow us to develop a program that is um, specific focused on mental illness. We want to uh, create and to stimulate the development of, uh, of projects and initiatives that may impact in that specific area. So we be, will be very interested in connect with you and uh, uh, perhaps have a chat, a meeting and show the paths that we have been pursuing. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Anna, there is a question whether this atlas is publicly accessible. 
Um, yes, that, uh, that list is accessible. Unfortunately, it is not in English. I only picked some <laughs> indicators and, and translated. it. But uh, um, if you are interested, I can do like a summary and, uh, and send. Uh, so it's a matter of, uh, of um, I would say, just a few days and I can do a translation and, and send because it is actually in, in Portuguese. Yes. Okay, I think that I can see some comments in the chat box that this would be uh, very appreciated. So, um, yeah, yeah, so, okay. So, thank I you very much. There is a commitment with a lot of uh, witnesses. I can do like a sum up of the Atlas and translate the indicators uh, to English and send to Susanna and then she, she can spread. If she... yeah, yeah, we will definitely disseminate this. Thank you. There is a question: uh, Is it possible to share the presentation? Yeah, I think after this uh, this workshop, we will we will share all the presentations. So, definitely. Uh, okay, so uh, I think that if there are no other questions, we will now move slowly to Kardica. Anna, thank you very very much for your excellent presentation. Uh, of course, maybe after all these three presentations, there will be some other questions. So, so we will we will monitor it, and and then if needed, we will come back to you. Thank you very much. And now we are moving uh, virtually to to Kardica because we have uh, today with us uh, Vasileos Belis, who is the director general of the development agency of Kardica in Greece. Uh, Kardica has built an effective local ecosystem uh, for the social economy. Uh, based on collaboration between the development agency, the cooperative bank, and a range of social enterprises in agriculture, development, and inclusion. Vasileos is our very active member, uh, always contributing to all the, the activities and initiative that we organize. So I think that um, now we are ready for you, Vasileos, and for your SR story, please. Thank you for your uh, invitation to participate in this very interesting uh, uh, conference. Uh, I will share my screen now. Uh, good morning, everybody. I will present our story, let's say, uh, about our development agency and uh, its relation with local authorities and uh, with uh, the uh, local um, uh, ecosystem of collaboration. Uh, actually, the development agency of Karditsa established on 1989 by the local authorities, uh, so it is an agency of, of local authorities. Uh, it is focused on social interest and uh, it is market and project oriented. Um, so we run projects like uh, CLFD, it is a rural development uh, pro program, uh, like STIA, it is a program of uh, accommodation and migration of uh, refugees um, hosted in apartments. Uh, another uh, project, a uh, current project, is uh, AgroChains. It is uh, the support of the creation of a biomass supply chain, and uh, we support it uh, we, in cooperation with uh, an energy cooperative established and hosted uh, in our uh, incubator. And uh, another project is YES. Uh, uh, it is a focus on the employment of uh, uh, young people uh, non in, in employment, education, or training. And we try to, to develop uh, digital, their digital skills, let's say. Um, except the, the projects we run, we organize local initiatives based on uh, local sources uh, and the resources, uh, like the incubator of collective initiatives, uh, like the support we offer to uh, local ecosystem of collaboration, like the social financing, in cooperation with uh, the cooperative bank, uh, like the information dissemination to the local population, or like the uh, the promotional the promotion of the of the entrepreneurial spirit, uh, the social entrepreneurial spirit as well as the the, the uh, entrepreneurial spirit generally speaking. Um, about the, I will uh, focus my presentation on the uh, on, on the our on our incubator, the collaboration incubator. What is it and why we uh, established it? Um, its establishment uh, 
uh, uh, is aiming at the support uh, and uh, hosting of any innovative initiative uh, locally uh, developed. And um, uh, it, it, it is, its uh, purpose is to uh, help the new initiatives to eliminate their startup cost because it is a big obstacle for a new initiative. Uh, and uh, another purpose was to cope with the bad reputation uh, the old fashioned cooperatives had. Uh, so uh, this, um, uh, this uh, establishment of uh, this incubator was a mandate of local authorities in order to support the uh, social innovation uh, locally. Uh, so uh, it it uh, began this this initiative this local initiative began from uh, our establishment. Uh, our first uh, experiments, let's say, were some uh, uh, women cooperatives, uh, a center for disabled people, a specialized center to offer services to women, some Roma centers, and so on. But uh, our biggest initiative and uh, the most risky, let's say, was the establishing of a credit cooperative. Uh, it was hosted, it hosted uh, in our premises for two years, from 1994 to 1996. Um, and um, uh, we uh, uh, supported uh, 1,100 citizens to uh, inscribe in this uh, uh, credit cooperative. And uh, two years after, uh, the, this credit cooperative uh, received the, the, um, the license to be transformed in a cooperative bank. And this cooperative bank played a very significant role in the development of our area. Now is a shareholder of us. And uh, I will tell more about this uh, cooperative bank later. Uh, we organize a lot of, of uh, efforts here. Cooperative Bank is now one of the main pillars uh, supporting our local ecosystem of, of uh, social economy. Um, currently, we host in our premises uh, an energy cooperative, two farmer cooperatives, two refugees association, one Roman nonprofit agency, two producer associations, um, one financial tool in favor of social economy, and we support the networking uh, uh, of uh, organizations belonging to the local uh, ecosystem of uh, collaboration. Uh, I will try to give an, uh, an idea, uh, an, an image of what the local ecosystem uh, of collaboration is. Uh, it was established gradually after the collapse of the powerful union of farmers cooperatives and now has several members, not only farmer cooperatives. We, uh, there are uh, 12 farmer cooperatives in the, in the local uh, ecosystem, uh, but uh, there are also three civic cooperatives, one energy community, two forest cooperatives, three social cooperatives, five non-for-profit agencies, six associations, one union of associations uh, based in villages, uh, and other unofficial groups. Uh, there is an ongoing process uh, to establish uh, uh, an unofficial legal status of this, uh, this network, but uh, it has, uh, it, it, uh, uh, has some problems, some some obstacles uh, due to the to the Greek legislative system. Uh, generally speaking, the uh, the uh, the collaborative ecosystem is well known all over Greece. Uh, it is the object of documentaries and TV broadcasts. It is an example. It is it is a, a paradigm uh, for the social economy all over Greece. Um, it is a basic element of the prefecture's identity. Uh, universities and uh, other research centers 
carry out case studies and researches about this social phenomenon. And many groups of uh, citizens uh, are visiting us or members of this ecosystem in order to exchange ideas to, to, uh, uh, to uh, learn about their experiences. Uh, I will give some figures. More than uh, 11,000 of citizens partic uh, are participating in uh, enterprises of social economy. Uh, the prefecture of our uh, the, the population of our prefecture is 130,000 people. So the 10% roughly of our population belongs to, to uh, enterprises of social economy. Uh, they are subscribed to, to, in, in them. More than 5,000 citizens participate in uh, uh, 200, more than 200 local associations, uh, acting mainly in villages in rural areas. The permanent employees of these organizations of the, the, uh, belonging to the local ecosystem uh, is uh, 105. Decisional employees are more than 60, 60 or 70. It depends on the, the, the year. And the total turnover of, the, uh, of these uh, organizations are more than 65% uh, million euros. And it is the 6% of the local GDP. It is four times over the national mean value. Uh, of course, there is a, a big social impact, a great uh, social impact of these uh, these activities of the, the local organizations, social organizations. Uh, and now, why the local collaboration system joined the uh, the European Social Economy Regions? Why we we joined to this network? Uh, first of all, first of all, uh, the, the, the cooperation is a tradition in our prefecture, and uh, Karditsa is, is a cutting point of uh, European networks. For example, the municipality of Karditsa uh, is, is uh, uh, the, the pioneer in the uh, sustainable mobility. It is uh, uh, known as uh, the city of bicycles. Uh, the Cooperative Bank is a member of uh, FEBA. FEBA is the uh, Federation European for Bank Ethica Alternative. And uh, uh, the, the managing director of the Cooperative Bank is uh, belonging to the governing board. Uh, the Energy Cooperative is a member of uh, PESCO. And the development agency was a member of GECES. And uh, uh, we joined, of course, to the SER network. Uh, why? because the uh, SR network is the meeting point of innovative regions active on social economy, and it is very valuable for us. What was the impact uh, to our activities? We joined uh, on 1918 uh, 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 to, to this network, and uh, a local event was organized on 5th of May of uh, 2018, uh, with the participation of a uh, uh, European Commission representative. The aim was to discuss how we can transfer and integrate at a regional level all the existing know-how know -how on participatory planning. And um, uh, it, it, this event was a, a, a start, a startup, a, a beginning, a, uh, beginning point uh, to emphasize the role of social economy organizations in the strategic and participatory planning with innovative structures, strategies, and tools. Uh, it, it aimed us to, uh, to support a common vision and, and the identity of our region, especially focused uh, in social economy. It helped us to attract the engagement of local population uh, promoting uh, and mobilizing uh, local resources. Um, and uh, it helped us to begin the planning and the uh, effective organization of uh, uh, sustainable value chains like the biomass, like uh, other like uh, resource, uh, local resources. Uh, and uh, 
through this uh, uh, participation to the to the ESR network, uh, we uh, uh, attracted researchers from universities and the research institutes, um, members of the local social economy ecosystem, regional, national, and European social economy and civil society organizations, representatives of EU bodies developing social economy policies, local and regional authorities and professional bodies uh, to, uh, to participate in the planning process or, uh, of activities and actions through which social economy would be an integral part of the local development. Uh, this was uh, some uh, points of the impact of the participation of, uh, of our participation in the ESR uh, network. Thank you for your attention. attention. I uh, am at your disposal for questions uh, uh, about our uh, local efforts uh, focusing on uh, the uh, uh, local ecosystem. Thank you very much, Vasileos. Very interesting indeed. Thank you for, for this excellent presentation. So I think that uh, again, here we could see very nicely how uh, ESSER and I would say this um, uh, active networks, how they can also contribute to boost new processes, I would say at regional and local level, they, they could further boost social innovation, further collaboration, etc. So, so I think that this is really uh, quite an added value of, of such active networking. I'm checking if there is a, a concrete question on you, Vasileos, but maybe in the, in the meantime, I would ask you, since you are really one of the piloting, I would say, partner of our SR network, uh, I, I would say after this uh, three years experience in ESSER, is there something particular, I would say, I don't know, a concrete dimension or something you think should be developed further? What could help you even more to benefit from this European networking? Is, is there anything particular? What do you think um, could, be, could be further developed? Yes. Uh, I think that... Uh... Uh, we would like to, uh, to transform our uh, work and uh, our initiative um, from uh, an amateur point of view into more professional. Uh, I, I liked very much the presentation of uh, Anna, um, and um, as a matter of fact, we need a system to, um, to measure uh, in, in a concrete base uh, our impact to, to, to local uh, uh, productive system and the contribution of the social economy uh, branch of it uh, to the, to the uh, total uh, uh, economic activities uh, and social activities here in this. Um, I think we need more concrete um, indexes, let's say, uh, to have a system of measurement and uh, 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 an impact estimation. Uh, of course, uh, I know that uh, uh, ESER and uh, the, the, the producer, Anna, and uh, your colleagues are participating in, uh, in uh, an effort to have tools for this direction. Uh, and uh, we would like to, to, uh, to uh, participate in a training course uh, or an exchange uh, program in operation in a network um, to um, exchange ideas, to exchange experience, how to measure our impact here, not the impact of our agency, but generally speaking, the impact of the, 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 um, the ecosystem of collaboration uh, in a tot as a total. I think that this, uh, this is a, a, um, a need uh, for uh, our uh, effort here, our initiative here. 
Thank you, Vasileos. This is very useful because now we are also starting discussion on, on the future of ESSER. Of course, we will have uh, 2021 edition, and then we will also have the ESSER concluding event in uh, early in December. So I think that uh, we could then also elaborate more on, on, on this your uh, intervention. It was very, very useful. I can see there is a, a question in the chat box from Christian. Really interesting presentation. May I ask you, have you managed to process to get from a local development to a regional development of the strategy? Was it integrated with the regional smart specialization strategy, if provided? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we participated um, actively uh, in uh, the uh, RIS3 uh, uh, process, uh, and uh, we uh, had a very tight cooperation with the regional authority uh, and uh, the um, uh, institution for the innovation, let's say, um, established especially from the regional authority uh, for the support of RIS3 strategy. Uh, and uh, speaking uh, more spe special, uh, we were responsible for the food sector uh, uh, coordination, let's say. Um, the prefecture of Kravitsa is one of the four prefectures of the uh, region of Thessaly. Um, we uh, work locally, but of course we have in mind uh, to cooperate with, the, uh, with other organizations, big organizations uh, in a regional level, like universities, like technological institutions, and so on. Um, as a matter of fact, the regional authority is a shareholder of us, so uh, we have the mandate to pray with other regional authorities. Um, so the, the answer is yes. Uh, we try to, um, to include uh, our local strategy in the regional strategy, and especially uh, to um, include it in the uh, risk free uh, strategy. Thank you very much, Vasileos. And uh, yeah, I think that I don't see any concrete issue, just some thank you messages, of course. Thank you for interesting and informative experience and presentation you shared. So as just to just to repeat that we will share all the presentations after after this workshop. So thank you very much for the moment, Vasileos, for this interesting presentation. And now we are moving to our last speaker uh, today, our very active ESSER member. And actually we are moving virtually one of the overseas departments and regions to, to my yacht. And I'm very happy to welcome among us uh, Jamila Hassani, who is a coordinator for social and solidarity economy at Crash My Yacht. Uh, Jamila is our key point and liaison for uh, presenting also EU policies in social economy in my yacht. And uh, she takes very active part in all SR events, initiatives, and, and uh, most of the projects. And I'm sure that in her intervention, she will share with us what are the key benefits for my yacht to be part of, of this European network and how it helps to initiate new regional inter and interregional partnerships. Uh, Jamila, please, the, the floor is yours. Okay, well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Zuzana. I just would like to check if everybody can hear me because I had an internet problem while uh, Vasilios was uh, doing his presentation. Yes. Yes? Oh, okay, because it was, uh, I'm hearing some sounds in the, in the background. So, Well, thank you so much, first of all, for having us here. I really would like to thank Ezer and the GSEF for creating such spaces and opportunities, of course. It's always a great way for us uh, to be able to share our best practices and bring the voice of social economy here in, in Mayotte. So I am very glad to be uh, with you today. And what I would like to say is that Ezer has been a way to open opportunities for social economy here in my yacht. So this is going to be a little bit uh, like the guideline for the whole presentation. And just like each presentation, there's always a menu, you know, and today it's going to be a three course uh, type of menu. 
where in the first place, I'm going to introduce to you uh, the social economy results that we are having here in Mayotte. Then I'm going to give you a little bit more of a background on what, how did it all started with Ezer and what are the main opportunities that came out of it. So social economy in Mayotte. First of all, it's quite important. I know that some of you know us already, Vasileo, Susanna. I know that we've met uh, quite a couple of times and Benjamin as well. Um, but it's quite important to say again where we are located. So we are in the Mozambique Channel in the Indian Ocean. We are located between Madagascar and Africa. Um, and this gives us a very strategic point uh, in the Indian Ocean. So it's quite important to remember that. We are a French overseas department since 2011, and we became a European outermost region in 2014. These are two information that are very important to bear in mind because it means that um, as an overseas country, uh, as a uh, European outermost region, it has taken time for us to kind of follow the European regulations and the French regulations, but as each problem, we try to transform it into an opportunity, but I will come back to that a little bit later in my presentation. So a few facts, just like any African country or territory that has an African background, social economy has always been part of our uh, DNA, and then I'm sure that members from the GCF have maybe seen it in such uh, certain speeches from African countries. Um, and Today, we were able to give it a modern translation, I can say. This is why here in Mayotte, for instance, 40% of Mahoran enterprises are from social economy and they are generating 23% of the private employment on the island. It is quite important, especially when we know that we're involving um, in an environment that has 35% of unemployment rate, 42% among women and 53% among younger generation, which is huge. And on top of that, we are also uh, having a very high uh, percentage of people living on poverty line. But very, very good news this year, social economy, uh, I mean, the jobs that were generated by our social enterprises was able to um, decrease that number. It has decreased from uh, seven points, which, mean, which means that it has gone from 84% to 77%. This is some very, very good news because we are really seeing the work that is being done on the ground. And, uh, but how did we manage to do all that? Well, with tools and strategies, of course. Uh, like I said before, Mayotte is a French uh, overseas department and the European outermost region. So it means that we're able to benefit from an ecosystem that was really positive to be able to enhance a new uh, energy for social economy. For instance, we're having a regional strategy that was able to sustain and strengthen our social and solidarity economy ecosystem. For instance, thanks to that, we were able to create a financial aid up to 6 million euros for our social enterprises, which is huge, and the regional council has supported us through that. Then we created as well a social incubator to support um, social innovation on the island. And thanks to their support, 382 jobs were able to be created since 2017. It seems quite a small number, but for us, it's actually really huge considering our environment. And of course, all of that was supported with a very, very strong awareness campaign uh, that we have made by using very, very concrete tools for any type of, of public. So, now that brings me, now that you have a little bit of a snapshot of what social economy is here in Mayotte. So how did it all start it with Ezer? Well, it's quite funny, just where we are at today. Like, especially like the same month, two years ago, we were in Bilbao at the GCEF, uh, launching the first European social economy region uh, participatory workshop. I remember I was so excited to see all people from all around the country. But what's really important is that, of course, I met Zuzana. Of course, I met Ula, and I'm forever thankful for the opportunity, but I also met Zuzana, which is the representative for uh, Aruba. And we started discussing, of course, we're both islands, and of course, we discussed about seashells and, and all that, but that's what not, that was not the most interesting. The most interesting is that, hey, come on, we are sharing so many things in, in common because we are remoted from our mainland, and we are both claimed you know, by uh, some territories. Mayotte is claimed by the Comoros, and Aruba used to be claimed by uh, Venezuela as well. There's something maybe that we could um, start to do here. 
But what's more specific also on that day is that we were able to present our local initiative, uh, which was uh, how we launched our first social economy hub in, remo in a remote village. And this was, has been like uh, the best practice that we shared during that initiative um, as well. And we also participated, of course, to the second edition of this. It was last year in, in Brussels, and it has uh, allowed us to connect with Germany, uh, Silicon Wilstal. I think, Ula, you participated to their easier event, uh, and we also worked with them. So this was one of the positive outcome that came out of it. But what's next, actually? The most important work is actually to work with these two partners who are Greenland, and Aruba. It may seem quite of an extreme example. Why Greenland, you know, the largest island and extremely cold, would like to cooperate with such uh, hot territories, you know? Well, Donald, we, we were better than Donald Trump. We were trying to get uh, Greenland on board with us. I always like to make the joke because we are also sharing common uh, things, which are that we're living for, uh, far away from our mainland, and Greenland is also claimed by Donald Trump, actually. So this is this was the base of our our work. So what have we done so far after meeting at Ezer? Well, we participated to the European Social Economy Summit, which would have never been possible if Ezer did not uh, showcase the event, explain what are the opportunities that would come out of that. So we were able to moderate a 90-minute workshop. There were several objectives. It was, first of all, to raise awareness about overseas regions and overseas countries and territories. But we did not want you know, to be only community-based and closed only into ourselves. We are already remoted enough like that. you know. We are more in a dynamic to open up. So the idea was to really to learn from other regions. And thanks to that, we were able to create two meaningful relationships uh, that we are actually starting to see if there are projects that we could work uh, together if they could assist us in certain projects where they are having a return on experience that we could replicate here, uh, adapted to local, uh, to our local environment, of course. So then after we are going to host another local Ether event uh, for this year, it's gonna be on the 4th of November, 2020. You guys are more than welcome. I would love to see you all. If you want, I can share the link later on. Of course, it's not going to be such a local event because we all know that uh, the COVID-19 is still ongoing, but we believe that there is going to be another time. And the idea is to really share best practices from Mayotte, Aruba and Greenland with showcasing really concrete example. We would like to have social entrepreneurs taking the floor, opening the voices for them so they can be able to share their stories where they are coming from. And all of that is going to be during the month of social economy. So this is the work that we are going to do with Mayotte Aruba and Greenland. And what about our perspectives? Because we need some. A post-COVID world is going to exist. We are for sure convinced about that, even if right now I know it doesn't seem like it. Um, but we would like to manage uh, to organize on-site visits, of course, because it's really good to speak virtually, but we need to meet and to, to learn from each other and see the territories, to meet the people. And also we would like to reinforce our exchanges of best, best practices by creating more targeted online workshops, because for now it's, it was just general and we would like to create more targeted workshops. And of course, we would like to support the development of a social economy ecosystem. How we are going to do it in a very concrete way is that here in Mayotte, we have developed some best practices, the social incubator, uh, we are having the social closes that are working really well. So we need to see what are the needs of Aruba and Greenland and how we could assist them and see if we are having some technical issues that we've developed that could benefit them. Um, as an example, just these small exchanges that we've had with Aruba and Greenland, it was possible for Greenland to be able to uh, support one of their social enterprise and Mayotte is going to assist them into doing so. So it is really great and we are very happy about that. So what can I say about Ether? What can I say about all these spaces? Is just, I really hope that we are going to keep on connecting. We really believe in the power of community because Ether has given us that opportunity. But it's not only community for economic reasons. Of course, we have to think of how we're going to create jobs and all that. But for Mayotte, it's also to give back dignity to people and to open up voices for 
for people who have been like really close for a very long time and has been an opportunity to open up to the world. So thank you so much, Ezer, and thank you so much to the GSEF for hosting this event today and uh, allowing uh, people from our community and from overseas regions <coughs> to find their way. So thank you so much. And this is going to be the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Jamila. Uh, very, very exciting and interesting. Excellent, as, as, uh, as always. Uh, yeah, I, I think that this was another example uh, on, on how we can just see in practice what at the beginning Ula explained, that how these uh, isolated dots at the beginning of our, let's say, piloting regions, how they developed into this, let's say, inter-regional collaboration, going more in-depth and to have some more common projects and, and uh, initiatives also between different, between different regions and parts of, of Europe. I think it's also now very clear that it is very, virtual sessions are super, but I think that it's also important to have some physical meetings and exchange of views. So we just strongly hope that it will be possible next year during the European Social Economy Summit in Mannheim. Let's yeah. see, but let's stay, let's stay very, very positive <laughs> and optimistic about this. I'm just checking, Jamila, if there is uh, a question or comments to your presentation. I can see from, from Lawrence. Thank you a lot, Jamila, uh, for your very energizing contribution. Yeah, it is so great <laughs> to learn <laughs> how you have become a driver. It's even more. <laughs> It is so great to learn how you have become a driver of social economy regional movement in Mayotte since uh, 2018 Bilbao Forum. I would love to see many more participants of this GISA virtual forum could listen to you and to be inspired and please share your stories there, of course. Then we have from Anna, uh, from Torres Vedras. Thank you for very interesting presentation that the expresses a sustainable and strategic agenda. I would like to know more about the elaboration of the regional strategy, the governance model, the financial model, assessment and the engagement of the different players. So I don't know if you want to come. This was to everybody, yeah. but if, if you want uh, Jamila to comment on this, you are more than Welcome. Oh, sure. Maybe I can uh, just uh, give uh, a return on, on experience. Like I said before, um, oftentimes overseas countries and territories are, are very remote from the mainland and it's really hard to keep up with the new regulations. However, there is a very strong opportunity is that so many uh, public policies still don't exist here, but there are some opportunities to create them. So that's how we actually decided to create our regional strategy with our regional council. Uh, because according to the law, there is a law, a French law, the Loi Notre, uh, which specifies that the regional council has to create basically the Bible for the development of the economy in Mayotte for the next six years. And we decided to work along with them to tell them, hey, come on, social economy is part of our DNA. Now we are having an opportunity to give it a modern touch how about we introduce it, you know, in, into that regional strategy? Um, and there was, of course, a lot of awareness work that had to be done with that. It has taken us almost a year to be able to do so. But then there, uh, we finally won because there are 26 actions out of 34 actions from that uh, regional strategy that is concerned with social economy. And it goes from uh, reduction waste uh, to how to insert social clauses, how to support women, uh, social entrepreneurs, because we know that they are really suffering from uh, high unemployment rate. So there is the financial aid that I was uh, telling you up to 6 million euros, uh, which is really going to, to help our, our social enterprises. So that's how we basically uh, did in order to have that regional strategy. So now we are just uh, implementing it on the, on the ground. Uh, we are having already certain, certain results with some partners. For instance, there is a cooperative uh, that uh, we supported, which is uh, doing compressed uh, mud bricks or compressed earth bricks, depends on uh, how each person is, is saying. And this is really great because it has been a way to bring a traditional know-how into an economic market 
and you know in, in developing a certain sector as well so there are eight cooperative cooperators around the island that decide to come together in order to create these compressed mud bricks and to build houses for uh, the Mahovran people so that's a uh, one of the concrete examples I hope that responds to the question please do not hesitate to ask me to be more specific if necessary thank you very much Jamila, I can see just some thank you messages. This is very good. Thank you. And um, yeah, I'm just checking the time because I think that uh, we are slowly coming to the end of this uh, session. So uh, if you have some uh, last comments or questions, please don't hesitate because now, now it's time. And... Um, if not, I just would like to repeat what, what I said also at the beginning that uh, next week during the uh, virtual October uh, digital road to Mannheim, uh, we will have a dedicated presentation on, on social economic canvas, on social economy diaries. So if you are interested, please join these sessions and you can learn more. And and yeah, I just hope that uh, with... Yes, Jamila, you... You want to yes, do I, I just have one, one, one question since, uh, you know, we are all together. Um, I don't know if Ula is, is still with us. Yes, she's still here. Um, it was one question that I wanted to ask her before. It's just to know, um, how do you think um, all these partnerships are really going to influence uh, the economy at a larger level, especially at a, at a European level? Because I believe that if you decided to make these initiatives, there must be a reason why you believe that social enterprises or social economy uh, initiatives can actually be the solution, you know, especially now with the crisis and, and everything. So I'm, I'm really interested to know your insight about it. And I'm sure there is one. Ula or Susanna, whoever. <laughs> Do you want me to come in, Susanna? Oh, yes, yes. I, I think that, uh, yeah, this is a very good question. And I think, uh, Jamila, that it was also uh, very clear from, from our uh, recently adopted recovery package that for, for us, let's say, this um, transformation towards this, I would say, green, uh, digital and sustainable and uh, resilient economic model and economy as such is now the priority. And I think that this, this goes absolutely hand in hand with social economy. I think that social economy as such can really provide a model in, in let's say in this process because we all know that all the all the basic principles of social economy are targeting exactly this objective so as you also know we are now working uh, within the European Commission on the targeted social economy action plan. We also, we, we will definitely include the contribution also from, from yeah. ESSER and from your valuable comments and, and opinions uh, to this. And uh, yeah, I think that this would be, this would be my, my first reaction on your question. I don't know if Ula wants to add something. I, I could add... Um... Um, it is very important what you said also in view of the crisis. I, I keep my camera off because I have bandwidth problems. Um, it is very important to link what we call the recovery and uh, resilience facility because um, we now need to see how uh, the national recovery plans will be constructed. And I think that it is very important that social economy finds its place in this uh, national recovery plans. And uh, the commission is, has put, a, let's say, a proposal uh, which was confirmed by the council with a lot of money. And I think it is important to find the right place. And I think what we learned about the partnerships and the possibilities of ESA should be very uh, used uh, for this national recovery plan. So, but of course, this is handled at, at, at a national level, but that's why we think it's important to transfer the messages of what we learned from ESA to also the, the member state level. And that's why also what we call the digital road to Mannheim, we have a lot of discussion on the recovery process because I think it, it is very important to link this experience to the recovery and resilience uh, facil uh, facility. 
And uh, if we look at the fact of the networking, networking is part of the reinforces the resilience of a region or a, a local entity. So I think this is something we, we need to take into consideration for this, uh, what we call RRF, the uh, Resilience and Recovery Facility. And we have also managed to have social economy, proximity and social economy to be one of the 14 industrial ecosystems for the recovery. So these activities there will then also play a key role in the recovery. I don't know, uh, Ula, I don't know. I think that now we are losing you a bit. So there is something with the connection. Anyway, I think almost everything has been explained. I don't know, Demila, Jamila, whether this is sufficient for you or... You would have some yes, additional. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, it, it was it was great because uh, actually uh, I, I discovered more about uh, Ezer and and really understood where was the the background and even the the way the the initiative grew is so uh, like social economy. You know, it just started from the, the grassroots. So this is why I was wondering, but uh, more on the broader level. What is the, the the vision and 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 so thank you so much. Yes, it has responded to my to my question. Thank you, Jamila. And also, you can see some uh, links uh, in the in the chat box for more detailed information on on uh, on our activities and also on the on the recovery as as uh, such. And sure. yeah, so I think that uh, yeah, we are exactly just on time. It's uh, 90 minutes has just passed. I, I hope that uh, we provided you uh, with uh, with enough information on um, on this our important ESER uh, initiative on this community building our European recipe. I would like to use this opportunity to thank to our excellent speakers, our proactive ESSER members, because I have to say it's a real pleasure to collaborate with you. And without you, since for us, uh, co-construction of EU policies in, in the field of social economy is absolutely crucial. So without you, it would not be the case. So we are very happy to have you, that we can collaborate with you. We will for sure organize this uh, concluding ESSER event early in December, so you will be invited. And, and uh, if um, other participants of today's session would, would have some additional questions, you would like to elaborate more on, on particular elements that have been mentioned today, please don't hesitate to come back to us. I think that Ula, at the beginning, she also shared our email, but you can call us, we can have a a chat or something like that so yeah once again thank you very much also big thanks to organizers for such an opportunity and uh, we are looking forward to our ongoing super collaboration thank you very much and have a very good day thank you and bye bye